Kuno Makamata's misfortune was nothing compared to that of Bessa, whose curse was not only her inability to die, but also the way death mocked her. Before Bessa was born, Omanyapu, old, bitter, widowed, was living only two houses down from Kati, Bessa's pregnant mother. Omanyapu had a pudgy orange cat whom she beat regularly to numb her loneliness. The village elders warned Omanyapu of what the spirits had told them about beating cats, but she disregarded them. She was powerless to her pride, and she hoped she would make the spirits angry enough to reunite her with her deceased love. When Kano, Charlie the fisherman's slave, knocked on Omanyapu's door to deliver her the fish that her nets had caught, the pudgy cat stared hoggishly at the tin bucket. He hid behind the fire pit as Omanyampu closed the door in Kano's face and inspected the bucket for any sign of pilfering. You would not touch it, she yelled, shaking the fish. Scales, salt water, and blood flew, and the cat dodged Omanyampu's warning. That night, when Kano finished his chore of cleaning fish for Charlie's wife, he blew the light from the last lantern away. The whistle his compressed lips made married the pungent smell of fish and journeyed through the village circle to Omanyampu's house, awakening the cat. The cat arose from the corner where he'd been lying and probed the room. Omanyampu's leg twitched, and she snored expletives into the night. Alarmed, the cat positioned himself to run in the event that she leaped from her sleep to beat him with the redwood handle of the porch broom, but she remained in abysmal slumber.